Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Halo Infinite in a, in a very sort of informal, you know, unscripted way and just kind of giving my thoughts on the game. Um, because I have been a big Halo fan from the beginning. Um, I really think that lore for Halo is fantastic. I loved the books, especially the Eric Nyland books, uh, Fall of Reach, First Strike. I think he wrote Ghosts of Onyx as well. And those really fleshed out the world so well. They, they give such an interesting context to the games. And so I, I loved the original trilogy. Mostly, I had some issues with Halo 2. But um, uh, I was very skeptical and kind of on the fence about Halo Infinite. Halo 4 was, for me, very disappointing. I didn't like the new aesthetic that um, 343 went with. It really just uh, reeked of you know, some art director being like, you know, we have to stand on our own two feet and I'm going to make a name for myself. You know, we don't want to be associated with Bungie anymore. But it's like, you can't take a, a franchise, you know, that's what Star Wars did. Can't take a franchise with, with an established aesthetic and then fuck it up like they did with the prequels and then expect people to still be in love with it. So they did that with Halo and it just looked wrong and it felt wrong. I also thought... You know, I think I always liked that the Forerunners were wrapped in a lot of mystery and that Halo was a big centerpiece for the games. But also, for me, I always felt that the Human Covenant War and the, you know, Humanity's Last Stand was much more compelling than what are these crazy aliens that built these rings? What were they about? So, you know, of course, bringing all the Forerunners into the plot and having them be part of the antagonist and all this shit in Halo 4, I just thought was a really bad direction. And if you were to ask me, I wouldn't have made a Halo 4 because I think Halo 3 was such a great ending to the trip. Well, it wasn't it wasn't a perfect ending, but it was good enough that it was really satisfying. So it's like, why would you? Where do you go from there? So I wouldn't have even advised to make a Halo 4. But I didn't like the stupid Prometheans, and I didn't like the Didact, and I didn't like all that shit, and the the lady with the stupid mechanical hair or whatever that was so dumb looking and i'm just like who who okayed this at 343 i don't remember stupid shit like that from the original halo games everything seemed to be kind of work together aesthetically in universe but nothing in in halo 4 or 5 seemed to work and 5 was just i'm not even going to get into it 5 was an abomination and it was stupid it was really dumb and really stupid so in comes Halo Infinite, and one of the reasons, one of the things I'm having an issue with, with with Halo Infinite is it's still getting so much praise, and it's not a bad game, but you have to put it in a context too. People have been so starved for Halo content since Reach, like quality Halo content, that they're just ready to fall in love with this game just because it, it you know, it 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 touches the nostalgia nerve. Um, and it feels like a, it feels like a Halo game for once, but you got to keep in mind, and this is, everyone seems to have a real problem with, uh, short-term memory is, or I mean, not short-term, but every, everyone has, it seems to have extremely short-term memory. It's like, do you guys remember what the announcement for Halo Infinite was like? The kind of the game it was supposed to shape up to be, this ga the game it was supposed to be. I mean, I, I didn't necessarily agree with what they wanted it to be, but it was at least an interesting concept. Keep in mind, Halo Infinite is called Halo Infinite not because of the UNSC Infinity, because then it would be called Halo Infinity. And also, the UNSC Infinity has been the flagship that Master Chief is on, or part of, for the last two games. What makes this one special? Especially since, spoiler alert, the UN UNSC Infinity is destroyed in the first, like, 30 seconds of the game. Okay? So, it has nothing to do with the UNSC Infinity. It was called Halo Infinite because Microsoft and 343 wanted to experiment with a games-as-a-service approach to Halo. A multiplayer... Uh, the multiplayer component of Halo would just kind of like Rainbow Six Siege just continually be updated year after year after year, seasons and seasons and seasons and seasons. And in addition to that, Halo Infinite's single player campaign was supposed to have 
almost episodic content or continual content added to it. And the open world was supposed to be massive, huge, like one of the largest open worlds we'd ever seen. It was supposed to have an astounding depth of content. It was supposed to mix up the single player formula while still remaining Halo. Um, and it was supposed to have content added to it, maybe even open up the ring. I think that was the idea, was that you're on this giant ring and as content is added to the game, you explore more of it and more of it. And the, the open world keeps opening up. Um, I think there was even rumors and Microsoft and 343 were hinting at MMO elements where it's like you can play Halo multiplayer or not Halo. You, uh, yeah, you can play Halo single player with many people and not just co-op that you might be even have to like team based battles and stuff in the single player campaign. Um, and the thing that really pisses me off about all the praise that Halo's getting is you do realize guys that this game delivered on absolutely none of that. The only thing it partially delivered on was the, the open world aspect of it. So, the problem I'm having with Halo Infinite right now is it's very clearly suffering from what I would call cyberpunk, you know, cyberpunk syndrome or cyberpunk disorder or whatever, wherein they were developing a game for, I mean, the game's been in development for six plus years, right? They were developing a game for probably four years and they had something really cool. And then it was either a disorganized mess because we know that there was massive uh, employee exodus from 343 at one point because of issues with management, dis disorganization, lack of leadership, lack of uh, cohesive vision. And so I think they had an idea for what they wanted a game to be. Four years later into devel development, it's a complete mess. And either Microsoft stepped in or someone at 343 stepped in and said, fuck it, we need to scrap this entire thing and start from the ground up. And that's why what they showed off at E3 for the first gameplay trailer looked like such shit because that had only been in development for about a year. And just like with Cyberpunk, they took it in a completely different direction. Well, actually even worse for Halo, because at least Cyberpunk, I think lived up to the vision that the the develop, the the lead developer or the lead director wanted, which was a super highly cinematic, mostly linear story, you know, with tons of cutscenes and Tons of, you know, dialogue and all this stuff, which is not what anyone else wanted, but that's what he wanted, and I think it succeeded at doing that, which is why it's boring, because we have enough games like that. We, you know, we don't need another game like that. But um, at least it, it succeeded at that. Halo Infinite was worse because I think what happened was after they scrapped the original project and they realized that they just couldn't do a project that scope, not because they didn't have enough time or it wasn't possible with the hardware, but because I think they just have a real lack of, I think 343 has two things. I have, I think they have a lack of organization and leadership and I think they're inept. I think they probably made some really bad hiring choices and they're just filled with people that actually don't know how to do their job. Look at how the Master Chief Collection launched. It took years for multiplayer to be functional, years for a game that launched the Xbox uh, One. It took years for it to be functional. How can you call yourself a game developer when you don't even know how to get multiplayer working for a game that everyone is dying to have the multiplayer for? And I don't understand why Microsoft didn't step in and be like, all right, we need to hire some competent people. Um, so it just seems that 343 are not a competent development studio. I feel like there might be a lot of people there that just shouldn't, be working in that industry that don't really know what they're doing they cannot solve the problems that they are that stand before them they can't do it and so i think what happened was they had to scrap everything after four years and just say okay what are we, we going to do open world all right let's just have some bases like far cry and you go take them over you unlock different parts of the map and then when you get to a certain point point for a campaign mission it plays like a traditional halo campaign where you just go through the you know forerunner structures and just fight room after room a bad guy Really easy, really simple. They came up with a couple of gimmicky things to have in the open world, and then they came up with one gimmick to show off at E3 to make people go, oh my god, which was the grappling hook. And this game just reeks of that. It reeks of a game 
that was not in development for six or more years. It reeks of a game that was in development for about two years. They just slapped it together, and that's all we got. And the problem is it's not terrible, and so I can understand why people are enjoying it. But you have to also put into context what Halo Infinite was supposed to be. It was supposed to be a it was supposed to be a revolutionary game. It was supposed to, for for Halo, I mean. It was supposed to introduce possible MMO elements. It was supposed to have this really rich open world. Do you remember the original Halo Infinite trailer with all these shots of the foliage and they were talking about like, you know, all these systems like the interesting weather patterns and the interesting animal AI and there might have been like actual stuff to do with the wildlife and this highly interactive world that you were going to kind of like understand the eco ecosystems on the ring and you would go to many different biomes and and uh, the open world would keep expanding because it's Halo Infinite. It's the last Halo game, not in that it's a finality, but in that this game will just continually be added to over time and you'll keep playing it and you'll keep coming back and there's more content. And they may still do that, but here's the thing. I think they've kind of gotten away with this just being Halo 6, a standalone Halo 6, and they're like, okay, good, all right, we don't have to keep adding content, maybe just multiplayer content. We don't need to, you know, because the, the, the plot for Halo Infinite ends on a, on a total cliffhanger and, and the main plot is all right for the game, but it doesn't really resolve a lot of the mysteries that are that are kind of um, uncovered in the game. And, and it's just... It just feels like a really unfinished mess and really just slapped together at the last minute. The open world, there are, like, three main activities. Um, basically, there are your f FOBs, which are just kind of like your your checkpoints or your outposts from Far Cry. Um, you go up to them, you kill some Covenant, and then you unlock them, and then you can fast travel there, you can spawn vehicles, and the more progress you make, uh, I think you get, they're called Valor Points or something like that. Um, the more of those points you get, the more troops you have access to. So, like, every time you spawn at a FOB, there will be X number of Marines. And I think at the, at the max level of Valor, or whatever the point system is called, it's basically XP. At the max uh, points, the X, XP, you I think there's, like, six to eight Marines that spawn there. And there, you have, like, um, you, know, you have, like, a rocket guy. You have a sniper. You I think they have, like, an ODST. Anyway, so you can do that. The next thing you can do are kind of like the fortresses from Far Cry 4, where these are outposts that are heavily guarded and really hard to get into, and there's a shitload of Covenant, and they're really hard to take down, and there's just a handful of those on the map. Um, and then there's campaign missions. Outside of that, there are towers to destroy, there are Forerunner collectibles, and then there are these contract kills, where... They're essentially like little mini boss fights you just go find on the map. And other than that, there's nothing to the map. There's hardly anything to find. There's hardly any reason to go explore. The other thing is that the map is all one biome. It's one environment. So it's, it's very boring to traverse and explore. And honestly, given some of the vehicles you get in the game and even just your basic movement speed, it's not a big map. You can cross it in minutes, it seems like. So... You know, the best part of the game for me... Oh, the, the other activity you can do is you can go save stranded UNSC Marines. And so, I don't understand what the infinite portion of this game is supposed to be. It's a pretty short, self-contained... Not self-contained. Well, relatively self-contained. It's a pretty short campaign that feels kind of slapped together. It's got the best story we've seen since Reach, but that's not really saying much because the other, the other games really sucked and really kind of fell apart in the story department. They wrote themselves into a corner. It's kind of like The Last Jedi... Um, with Star Wars, they wrote themselves into a corner with Halo 5, and so it's just like, well, they just have to retcon everything. So they basically just dropped, you know, Halo 5 down a flight of stairs, which I, I'm totally fine with that. The problem is, is that you still have to explain what happened to everything at the end of Halo 5. So there's a bunch of really kind of sloppy retconning and just throwing story elements away. And like I said, the open world, is, it just feels so barren and empty, and there's not much to do in it. Another thing I have to point out is that, you know, the visuals are not really that good. And especially if Far Cry 6 came out this same year, I'd say the, the environment has a greater depth of detail. Like, it has semi-destructible environments, it has a fire propagation system, it has 
um, AI roaming everywhere. Um, it has really dense, um, almost photorealistic foliage uh, with its own physics and everything. It has a day-night cycle. It has a dynamic weather system. Um, it has, across the board, better graphics, and it's a more complex game to, to process for any computer. And on my PC, it runs at, you know, un uncapped with VSync off, it runs at 100 to 120 frames per second. You know what I mean? Halo runs at 60 indoors, like a locked 60, which is fine. And then when I go outside, it's 30 frames a second. And I'm like, but this game looks so much worse than Far Cry 6. Like, this game is definitely not, like, next gen. This game is, like, what you might consider, like, oh, it's a pretty good-looking game on the Xbox One. You know, it's just a slightly polished up, ex polished up Xbox One game because that's exactly what it is. Um, it was supposed to come out for the Xbox One. They didn't make the deadline. The graphics looked shitty, so they had to put a shiny coat of paint on them. And so it's also a really unoptimized mess, which is another reason I, I think that 343 is just filled with people who don't know how to do their job. They're not very good at what they do. Because, again, you know, the the Far Cry team at Ubisoft, next-gen game that really kind of, it, it announced itself as like, wow, these graphics are much better than 5, Far Cry 5, or anything else we saw on the previous consoles. Um, and it runs beautifully, and it's got all these, you know, amazing visual effects. And, you know, again, the return of semi-destructible environments and, and uh, you know, great AI and all this stuff. And Halo's just like, it doesn't have that much going on in it. And it just, it runs like absolute shit. And even after some of the patches and shit, I have to turn the graphics down in order to uh, get reasonable frame rates when I'm playing outside. And in fact, when I played the campaign through the first time, I was playing, anytime I was in the open world segment, I had to just settle for 30 frames a second, which is unacceptable. Absolutely unacceptable. So, I mean, you've got all of that, and I, I just don't understand how people completely forgot what the point of Halo Infinite was supposed to be. You know, that it was a never-ending campaign, a never-ending sort of pool of single-player and multiplayer content. Another thing that really pisses me off is there's so many missed opportunities in the open world. You get these fobs, right? And then you have to save these marines. I think it would have been better for, you know, Halo actually has its roots as an RTS. That's what Halo was, Halo Combat Evolved was, before it became Halo Combat Evolved. It was a RTS, and they had fun, like, individually commanding the troops. And then it became almost like a squad-based um, tactics game, except not, like, turn-based, where, you know, you control one guy, and then you can bring people with you and load them up in jeeps, take them around the map, and fight aliens. So it was like a third-person shooter. And then they brought the camera in even tighter, and it's like, okay, you you don't have to worry about your squad. They will follow you. They've got the AI to do it, but it's about you, the cyborg, which eventually became Master Chief. And then eventually, they just made it a first-person shooter. And it was always an open-world thing, and it was also always like kind of an RTS kind of thing, and that's what made it really different and special. And so a big missed opportunity in this game was to have some sort of dynamic sort of control point element where capturing fobs was not all you needed to do you needed to hold them and maybe you could have uh sort of like you needed to bolster its you know your your fobs and 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 outposts defenses by you know calling in you know machine gun emplacements and i think there should have been there could have been something like an incentive to like so if you save marines it like it doesn't add to your pool of marines all it gives you is those valor points but, you know, if you have enough, they just start showing up at your fobs anyway. So, it, you know, what I think would have given the game, like, a really nice flavor and really fit in with the um, the sort of themes of, of Master Chief being, like, a sort of protector and savior of humanity is you have to go save these marines. And there's only so many of them out in the open world. So if you save them and you bring them back to your base, let's say you save 10 of them. Well, now in your base's resources or your your military resources, you now have 10 plus more marines. So if you want to take them with you to tackle objectives, well, then great. But all, almost like the old school Rainbow Six games, you know, if, if they die, they dead permanently, you know? And there's ways to work that so that you give the illusion that there's a finite pool of personnel left 
and e each person is precious and you have to really like weigh carefully the option of like do i actually want to bring this person into combat with me um do i want to risk losing my marines tackling this objective can i do it on my own by you know again you have like a finite pool of marines that you have that you can call into battle with you and so the player constantly feels like wow the, you know every life is precious i have to watch out for every one of them but you know a thing you could do behind the scenes is just kind of like continually like if you lose enough marines you'll get another distress call to go save more of them you know what i mean so like there isn't actually there is an infinite number of marines but you don't know that at least not your first playthrough or maybe even second and so you will treat them like a valuable resource and every life is precious and you will try and and concert you know you will try not to waste their their lives and you will try and think tactically another thing is is that you know one of the most fun parts of halo infinite is loading up a bunch of marines and just like assaulting covenant positions with like a fire team and once again half the time just doesn't work because they will block off the um the ingress points to a lot of these uh campaign missions or control points or whatever with giant boulders so you can't bring tanks in you can't bring warthogs in another thing is like all the big major bases have their front doors locked and yeah i know you can take out the generators to open the doors and maybe have your team of marines roll in but honestly the the places where the generators are by the time you get there and bring them down you've probably taken out half or more of the covenant forces in there already and you don't need help anymore you know I think it would have been better if you could just drive through the front gates or you could get your marines to come out with you and they'd be able to follow you into the base, you know, or you could destroy the gates with a tank. So you drop a tank in and bring it in. Another thing is that the vehicles control like the all the vehicles, including the tank, control like the fucking Mako from Mass Effect 1, meaning if you hit a pebble, you know, um, if you hit a pebble going five miles an hour, you're going to careen off into the, you know, into space. It's just going to launch you off the planet. I mean... The, the Warthog will just flip over for, like, over anything. Like, over any little minor inconvenience, the Warthog, warthog will flip over. The tank gets stuck um, and, and centered all the time, so you can't even move it. Um, and the Marine AI sucks compared to how it used to be in the previous Halo games. You know, they used to be able to drive vehicles, and they were great gunners, and you know they wouldn't always do stupid things like shoot a rocket at your feet. You know, they had much better AI. I've seen some videos of just the AI battling each other, it seems like the AI is not terrible, but it, for some reason when they're riding with you, they just, they can't pick targets, they can't do enough damage, they're not concentrating fire, um, and they just get killed all the time. Another thing is, is that the Marines should have been made beefier. Like, I really think that the, the sort of fire team based combat and, and bringing, um, people in with you to go do stuff would have been a great aspect of the, the single player campaign. And again, it would have given weight to saving marines having finite resources i think another thing that would have been great is vehicle resources being finite like you find a warthog in the field you bring an engineer to come fix it you have your pelican come pick it up and drop it off at one of your fobs and it's like okay we don't have unlimited warthogs so we need to use them sparingly so it would encourage exploration to go out and find vehicle resources or find scrap and and maybe you'd have to find specialty personnel and if you can um load up a specialty personnel at one of your bases, they can actually start either crafting or repairing things um, that you bring to them. So you bring them a bro broken scorpion, but they can repair it with scrap. You know, again, kind of like being like a first person shooter RTS, where it's like you need to keep controlling points on the map. You need to have your, your bases producing stuff, but also you're on the ground. So you can issue those orders and commands, but you're on the ground having to go in with personnel and actually do the fighting as well. That would have been awesome, and it was such a missed opportunity for Halo Infinite, and it would have added so much more depth to what you can do. Um, there should have been resource collection, there should have been base management, there should have been base um, uh, protection. Again, if you wanted to have an MMO mode, you could have had co-op mode where, like, you know, your buddies either control another Spartan or they control someone in the Marines, like maybe an ODST, so you give them a little bit more health than a normal Marine, and so your buddies can go in with you co-op and, and blow shit up or even better you could do sort of like a metal gear solid five thing where if you choose to go online then your your bases are up for grabs and so people can load in as the covenant and go attack your bases in your campaign and if your defenses are good enough you might actually be able to kill them 
you know, or you have to go in and defend your bases at certain points and you can, and you can start having skirmishes with other people on the map and kind of like the ultimate expression of big team battle. You can have like covenant teams on one side and UNSC and teams on the other and people spawn in. You could have maybe like 20, 40 players on each side. And again, kind of like just like a first person sort of Starcraft or Halo Wars where everyone is on the ground fighting, but you are all vying for control of the territory, you know, um, so many things they could have done with the concept of Halo Infinite, with the open world, with MMO stuff, and they just didn't do any of it. And people are like, hey, it's a pretty run-of-the-mill Halo campaign with some open world segments that are very half-baked and done so much better in other uh, games like Far Cry. Um, and they're like, yeah, it's the second coming of, you know, Halo Christ. And it's like, no, it's a, it's a, <laughs> it's a rushed game with, with a, not failed promises, but a failed premise. You know, the whole premise of what the game should have been uh, has complete they've completely failed at it and um, getting into the plot here let's talk about spoilers a bit a little bit I'm not gonna just I'm not gonna spoil the plot but what I am gonna say is as a halo fan it fucks up the lore it also it makes the end of the human covenant conflict seem not as important because it's like we're not clear how fucked humanity is right now like is there anyone able to defend Earth? Because is the UNSC disbanded? Did Cortana kill every, all the all the major UNSC uh, installations and ships with the Guardians? We don't know what's happening with Earth. We don't know what's happening with humanity. We don't even know if there's anyone left alive on Earth. We don't know. We have the Banished now that we're fighting. And if you didn't play Halo Wars 1 and 2, which I didn't, but I did watch some recaps. It's like I don't still really don't know what's going on with them. And it's like there's all this shit going on. And so it's just like, well, I thought we saved humanity and I thought Earth was saved. And it's just like, now what's going on? Like, why why do they keep saying the UNSC is destroyed? Like, are, is all the UNSC forces destroyed? Because they had a lot of ships in Halo 5 like, and Halo 4. Like, what did they? those all get destroyed? And how come the Banished are only on this ring? Why aren't they um, hightailing it to Earth to try and wipe out humanity? And I think the biggest thing, too, is they did Cortana so dirty. Her character arc made no sense in 5, and they had to retcon it, and the only way they could retcon it, because she became an irredeemable genocidal monster, which is just so out of her character. You know what I mean? It, it, it's, like, it's like an episode of uh, Mr. Rogers, where you find out that he's been, like, uh, capturing hobos and like you know flaying the the skin off their flesh and making like snuff films in his basement. It's just like it's so out of character. It's like why would you ever do that? Why is Cortana becoming a, a irredeemable genocidal monster? You know. Um, and of course she invites all of the violence that that is now being visited upon humanity right now with her stupid guardians plan. And I just don't understand why they did that. And I thought that there was going to be some kind of twist that. Cortana knew that there was an even bigger threat out there and she didn't have time to explain her situation and so she just went for the Guardians you know like there's a, a, th a threat greater than the flood or a resurgence of the flood or something and she was going to use the Guardians to keep everyone safe and she couldn't explain it to the UNSC because they, they didn't trust her because of her rampancy or whatever and and I thought there was going to be some kind of payoff like okay tr the chief cr tr trusts Cortana so his faith is going to be rewarded but nope she's just a piece of shit she's just a monster and now we have to retcon her away but we can't get rid of Cortana so now we have to have new mini Cortana and it's like yeah but mini Cortana hasn't gone on all the adventures with us and helped us you know stop the flood and save humanity and go to the ark and you know light the ring and she hasn't done any of those things with us, so it doesn't matter if there's a new hologram that looks like Cortana. It's not Cortana, so, I mean, like, again, the 343 doesn't know what they're doing. They don't even know how to retcon their own horse shit um, out of a story. I could have thought of a million better ways. Like I said, I think a better way would have been that Cortana was going to use the Guardians because there was a bigger threat, and she, you know, she was sort of threatening humanity, but there, there could have been some reason why she was doing that she needed to do that but ultimately she was still had humanity's best interest at heart and she wasn't going to harm anybody and the, the chief's faith would have been rewarded but nope that's not how it goes so again it's just like way to way to slap your fans in the fucking face <laughs> like seriously they fucked up the lore they fucked up the plot um 
the gameplay in Halo Infinite is solid. I will say it's probably a little too difficult though. Um, you can no longer shoot the kind of the weird lip on the edge or the weird cutout on the edge of the jackal shield to hit their hand and kind of stagger them and then hit them in the head. So they're probably the most frustrating enemies in the games. The brutes are too bullet spongy. They're kind of gone back to that Halo 2 um, <laughs> rendition of the brutes, which are just don't. Um, they were incredibly bullet spongy in that game. Don't do it. Um, and I don't like any of the weapons. In the campaign, the weapons are all right. They're all right because they're they're balanced differently than they are in multiplayer. But there's nothing I really love. The only thing that kind of works for me is the new assault rifle. Um, this it doesn't have a crazy spread unless you just hold the trigger down nonstop. Um, it does a reasonable amount of damage now. So even only it only has 32 rounds, it does a reasonable amount of damage. Um, but everything else is just kind of. Meh, I didn't really like using a lot of the different weapons in the campaign. Uh, pretty much, you know, like, ever since Halo 1, uh, that was the last game that had good Covenant weapons, in my opinion. All the Covenant weapons suck in this game, and they're kind of useless. Um, I would pretty much stick with the Assault Rifle and BR, or maybe a Rocket Launcher if you just want to take out some heavies. Um, like I said, the campaign is okay, it's fun. I think the gameplay is really solid. The grappling hook is fantastic, and the grappling hook is one of those things that I I can't even give credit to 343 for it. They've made so many mistakes and done so many stupid things, I think that was a pure accident. I think someone just said, like, wouldn't a grappling hook be cool? Oh, yeah, I guess. And it just worked out in their favor. The grappling hook in Halo is now one of those things that you're just like, how the hell did we ever play Halo without this? It's fantastic, you know, for getting out of tight spots quickly, um for closing the dis distance between you and an enemy so you can just give him like a real good smack and just kill him. Uh, it, it, it's really great. Uh, it's great for traversal too because it, it it's one of those great things in an open world when, you know, you don't have the best jump height or whatever, but you now you've got the scrapping hook and so you're not really restricted from going anywhere in the open world. So um, that's the thing, you know, the, the actual gameplay mechanics and, and the controls and everything they feel great the grappling hook is great traversal is great exploration is great there's just nothing to explore so that's why i'm saying like it's such a missed opportunity this game could have been phenomenal if they had stuck with the original vision and actually worked on it on this version of the game the entire six years um or the version of infinite that was supposed to be an infinite game a game as a service a game that just keeps going but they didn't and so it was just slapped together. Um, so that's the single player aspect of the game. Like I said, gunplay is really great. Um, you know, the Covenant is pretty well balanced. I would say Brutes are a little OP. I would say the no, the, the Chargers and the Chieftains are a little too spongy. Regular Brutes are okay. Um, elites feel like Elites again, which is really great. Uh, the Jackals, they need to fix that. Because, <laughs> I mean, my buddy beat it on Heroic and he was like, I wanted to shoot myself. And I started on normal and I kicked it down easy because I was like, I just want to see the campaign. I don't, I don't want to be getting super frustrated. Um, I also don't have a ton of hard drive space. So I, I threw this on my external, which is only a 5,400 RPM drive, um, which isn't usually a problem, but the load times for Halo Infinite were insane. So I was like, yep, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not dying every five seconds and sitting through five minute loading screens. Um, but yeah, I really like the gunplay in the single player. I just wish the weapons were better. I couldn't find any weapon that I really absolutely loved. Um, the Covenant feel vehicles feel great, but the human vehicles, I love the, that the Razor, uh, back is, is reintroduced. I love loading up a shitload of Marines and attacking a position. But like I said, you know, they just block off trails so that you can't take your marines where you need to go and the vehicles handle so poorly they're always getting flipped over and then you're just stuck there taking fire and all your marines die or the vehicle flips over on them also when you spawn vehicles at your fobs almost every single time they there, there's a marine standing right at the spawn point he doesn't duck out of the way and he gets hit and killed and you're just like that's okay whatever fantastic um so the campaign needs some work but i think uh there's enough of a skeletal framework there for some really solid fun gameplay i mean when when it is working right the game is fun you know and i also like that it doesn't 
it is a bit more like Far Cry where, you know, in previous Halo games, well, no, that's not really fair, but in previous Halo games, they did kind of want you to do certain things a certain way. But like I said, there's those boss fights. And even on easy, sometimes the game is a little, give me some trouble. Um, and so when I was like, well, I want to take out that contract kill, but I don't want to risk fucking dying. So I would take the Hornet and just, you know, fucking aerial bombard them and kill everything. And that's how I did it. You know, I took out a lot of outposts like that on all sorts of stuff. And I like that the campaign didn't stop you from doing that. It wasn't like, that's not the way you're supposed to do it. Because it's just like, if I was in a real war, that's absolutely what I would do. I would not, <laughs> I'm not going to take the honorable route and go in on foot and mono e mono. I'm just going to airbomb, you know, I'm just going to carpet bomb the shit out of where the place is. So um, I did really uh, like that they didn't hold your hands there. Um, but anyways, that's a single player campaign. And, and like I said, you know, I just, I don't know why everyone completely forgot that Halo Infinite was supposed to be a totally different game. Um, they're just they're just happy that they got Halo 6 and I'm like I, we were not promised Halo 6 we were promised like Halo 6 7 8 9 10 all in one game and it would just keep going so and I don't think that's what they're doing now and we'll see if we'll see what the story DLC is going to be like it, it ends on a real kind of severe cliffhanger and it ends as if it's like okay there's going to be new content in a month that's how it ends and it's like but who knows how long it's gonna be for more story content. And judging by how long it took them to get this last one out, it could be six months, could be a year. And at that point, 343 or Microsoft might just say, why don't we just do Halo 7, you know? Um, but anyways, moving on to multiplayer. Um, multiplayer is fantastic. Multiplayer is absolutely fantastic. The gunplay is amazing. I guess that's pretty much all I can say though. <laughs> multiplayer is really fantastic. The gunplay is amazing. I think the matchmaking is pretty good because um, I'm always usually paired with people that are around this. Well, I'm, I'm always dominating every match, which I never used to do in Halo. Um, so I don't know if it's actually that good, but, it, you know, I, I basically I do appreciate that I'm not constantly getting stomped every time I, I load in, you know, by people who've been playing Halo for like 20 years. I mean, I've been playing Halo for 20 years, but I've never been like, you know, competitively good at it or anything. I just kind of know what I'm doing. Um, so the multiplayer is really fun. And um, I do think that the assault rifle works so well for the multiplayer. And there's a lot of little nuance to how to get good at the multiplayer too. Knowing the exact minute to uh, bash someone, to kill them. You know, uh, another thing that I've been doing that a lot of people do not do, and I, I've won so many gunfights like this, is just firing the assault rifle in burst mode because... Um, it keeps the accuracy on that reticle real tight. And you may think that you're still hitting someone by, you know, kind of unloading. Um, but, because, uh, I mean, there's a point towards the end of unloading where the reticle just basically expands to a circle and you're not hitting shit. That's not what I'm talking about. But, like, I'm talking about, like, sustained fire for, like, through half the magazine that maybe you let off for a second and then more sustained fire. People think they're hitting their target with almost every shot. You're not. Because if you do three round bursts out of that, kind of like with the BR, you can drop someone's shields way quicker. And I have definitely won a bunch of gunfights um, against someone who started firing at me. Like he started firing at me beforehand just by using that. So I really was having a lot of fun with the multiplayer. I love the introduction of the mantling mechanic. Um, I think it works fantastic in the multiplayer. And it's like, once again, it's one of those things. I know they've had it in five. I don't remember if they had it in four, but it's one of those things that it's just like, why, why wasn't this in Halo before? You know, having to clear every jump with your feet to get over a ledge is infuriating. Um, so Halo multiplayer is fun. On paper. On paper, it's fun. In practice, uh, well, first off, there's only about... I don't actually know how many maps there are. I'm going to say about five or six. And the problem is that the map rotation, when you're when you're just doing quick play and stuff, it, it'll honestly just keep loading the same two maps for you. And these are not community votes either. It's not like it's not like back in the Halo 2 days where everyone's just voting lockout every single time. No, this is just shitty, uh, shitty, you know, quick play servers that just keep rotating the same two maps. Um. I'd say all but two of the maps are not really that fun. 
they're kind of a huge pain in the ass to play. They're not fun. Um, and the reason I say there's only about five maps, because there might be actually be like seven, is because Big Team Battle, I think I've played two matches of Big Team Battle because it never works. And this is a huge issue that people have been talking about since Halo launched. And uh, I think the big scandal was 343 was supposed to have it fixed before Christmas break. And then they're just like, sorry, we can't get it fixed. Um, peace. And they just fucked off for Christmas break. And it's like, as a company, don't you realize a lot of people are going to be getting Halo Infinite for Christmas and their first introduction and first impression of the game is going to be, you know, Christmas morning or whatever, popping it in, installing it and trying to get on and play big team battle and you can never connect. Um, and, th you know, the fact that there are no very few maps and and I'd say the overwhelming majority of them are not fun to play. The water treatment plant sucks i've gotten used excuse me i've gotten used to it uh so i you know i know i have strategies for how to you know traverse it quickly and and get back into the the fight and get kills but it's just i think it's a crappy map it's ugly to look at it's not fun to play in sword base is another one that really sucks um because another thing is that you know uh, there are game modes where you can spawn with BRs, and it's kind of necessary because the whole reason BRs were introduced in Halo 2 is they realized that in Halo 1, you're fighting at distances, even in multiplayer, but especially in the single player, you're fighting at distances that are just extremely long range for that fucking assault rifle. That's why everyone loves a pistol, because it has a friggin' scope, and the rounds go where you put them. <laughs> so they, they realized that they needed a kind of all-purpose kind of assault gun that has some range to it and a scope. Um, that's why the BR has just been a mainstay of the series since then. Um, but of course, in Halo Infinite, the BR is only, there's only a couple on each map. They're on the wall. They have one magazine of ammo in them uh, and then one extra that you carry with you. So there's no ammo for them. And it's just incredibly frustrating. Um, and another problem, like I said, is, you know, even in single player, there's not that, there aren't that many good weapons in the game and then you move on to multiplayer where they've balanced all these weapons for multiplayer and now they really suck i mean the shotgun is a big piece of shit you have to be absolutely point blank to do any damage with it um things like the needler are okay but again you know these these weapons are just they're hard to find people are going to grab them before you they're limited ammo so basically everyone's just fighting with assault rifles all the time um very few vehicles spawned on each map um as people have pointed out, like, I don't think that there's actually a point where Scorpion tanks ever show up. Maybe in big team battle, but I have never seen a Scorpion tank in multiplayer yet. Uh, there's a bunch of vehicles I haven't seen in multiplayer yet. Having to wait for power weapons to drop in, like the rocket launcher and stuff like that. Like, you, you can't just go to it. You can't just go to where the, you know, uh, your weapons usually are stored on the map and, and, and expect them um <clears throat> excuse me, expect them to be there, which I, I understand it's sort of a balancing issue, but um, it's just a lot of frustrating things like that. But I think more to the point, the biggest issue I have is, you know, when I was talking to my buddy about this, he just, you know, he he's like a veteran Halo player. I mean, I've probably been playing Halo longer than he has, like in terms of years, but I mean, I've played Halo 2 against this guy and he's just, I don't think I've ever one against him he just wipes the floor with absolutely everyone he plays with and he has put probably thousands of hours into um almost every single halo game so uh you know i was talking to him about it and i was just like bro do the do the weapons kind of feel anemic to you like they just don't do any damage he's like oh totally man he's like i just i can't fucking get any kills or no, not can't get any kills, but he's just like, I, I feel like I, you know, I'm, I'm shooting spit wads at people or, or nerf darts. Like, I just cannot do enough damage. You know, he's like, it's incredibly infuriating. Um, and I feel the, exactly the same way. You know, there's too many weapons in the game that just don't do enough damage. Um, and they're really frustrating to use, too. Um, I can't think of a, a single Covenant weapon that I, I will actually pick up and use in, in multiplayer, except occasionally the Needler. I will say this, it is the kind of game where I do think the weapons are terribly balanced. I think they're all of them are too anemic, but it, it behooves you to kind of have fun and start experimenting with weapons and not just stick with the assault rifle all the time. Um, 
But then at the same time, it's the most reliable, most well-rounded weapon in the entire multiplayer roster. So it's like, it's hard not to. The stupid DMR thing now, which is, it's not a DMR. It might, even my buddy was telling me, he's like, no, it's full auto. And I was like, but I've held the trigger down before. He's like, you weren't holding it down long enough. I'm like, what's the rate of fire like? He's like, it's really slow. So the thing that looks like the DMR, I guess is not, but also is. That thing does next to no damage. I remember I shot a guy in the head like four times with it and I still didn't even drop his shields and I just kind of gave up. You know, it was, it was during a big team battle and he was really far away and I was just like, all right, I'm done. Um, and so it's really frustrating to play with, with these kind of weapons that just, and again, the, the weapon roster this time, all, almost all the covenant weapons suck and are super, super boring. Um, and then they took a bunch of stuff out of the UNSC lineup. Um, you almost never see snipers spawn, uh, rocket launchers once in a blue moon. Um, the shotgun has such low range that it's basically useless. The only thing I would occasionally pick up is a BR, you know, um, sometimes a DMR if I just need to get a little range because it, it does at least have better range than the assault rifle. I mean, you can, you can keep pulling the trigger and you're not losing that much accuracy, um, the pistol works okay, but it's really more of like a last stand, like, like pistols are supposed to be in actual reality, but it's kind of just like a last stand thing, like, you know, you, you, you are down to half a mag already, you start a firefight with someone, you're out of ammo, you whip it out, go around a corner, and you just kind of wait for them, and then you just blast them in the face a couple times with it, so it works, um, it's okay, and you know what, here's the thing, it's got enough range and accuracy on it that I have used it to sort of snipe people before, you know, you just kind of keep taking pot shots at them, and if they're not smart enough to get back into cover after you drop their shields it's a quick headshot and then you win so um but i just don't like the weapons and i don't like the way they're balanced and so that's another thing that ruins the game for me um it's really just the the con like the, the way the controls feel the way things like the assault rifle handle um the sound effects on all the weapons are fantastic um some of the maps like the the new mombasa maps Bizarre is okay, but the, the nighttime new Mombasa map is actually solid. That's a great map. It's really good. It's really fun. It's really fast-paced. And even if you're really good and they suck, it's still difficult to totally dominate them because there's a lot of mobility and there's a lot of angles for them to come at you. So you really have to be on your toes. So I do like that map. But again, it's few and far between when I actually get that map. I don't like the equipment in this game. The stupid shield is useless. And... Once again, you know, why introduce the grapple hook when it's something you can only pick up occasionally on maps? And you're probably going to get killed before you get a real good chance to use it. And it's like, why not just give everybody a grapple hook or have game modes where everyone already has a grapple hook or something like that? And so far, I haven't seen anything like that. I mean, I, I haven't gone on a quest to find it either, but I haven't seen anything like that. But I think, I think the, the lack of maps is really killing the game because the maps that they have are not that great. There's only, like, like I said, two or three that are actually okay one of them's really good and so it gets really boring really quickly and um i don't like the way some of the choke points are on the map i hate the spawns in the game oh my god dude the amount of times i've spawned and i turn around and there's three or even four of the enemy team bearing down on me and i just get killed as i spawn um or you know my team is off in a firefight and i don't spawn anywhere near them so i'm just running 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 finally get to them you know and then again i'm facing off against three people because my team sucks and they all just get killed <laughs> you know um so many times i feel like i'm just running around just trying to find or trying to get back to the the you know the center of the of the battle so i can actually do something um and keep in mind i am usually ranking the top of amongst both teams in every match so it's not like i don't know what's going on it's just terrible spawn so the spawns are terrible um map rotation is terrible uh apparently there's not a lot of uh like ways to set up good custom games um oh the progression through the uh battle pass i mean uh, people have talked about that to death but it really is bad because think about it like this you know the, the main issue before was like well you know, you, you only get XP from doing the challenges. A lot of them are bullshit because, like I said, some of the weapons suck. There was one where that was used the... It's basically the Covenant version of the BR, and it sort of replaces the Covenant carbine. It shoots out a three-round burst of plasma, but, you know, those are uh, projectiles, not hit-scan weapons. So there's a there's a, 
uh, lead time between how long it takes for the projectile to leave the gun and then hit your target. And even though they do track a little bit, it's kind of hard to hit your target. So there was one challenge, I think it was to get like 20 kills with that. And I try, and again, it's not like you, like everyone spawns with them all the time. There's only like one or two on the whole map and everyone's trying to get them. So it's just the challenges are just infuriating and really hard to do, even for really good players because the weapons suck. So it's just like, if you want me to get a ton of kills with a weapon I hate using because it doesn't do enough damage and it's difficult to use, it's not going to happen, you know? Um, and so it's it's tied to those challenges so everyone bitched and they're like there needs to be something tied to just general like putting in hours into the game so now they're like okay you get 50 XP per match but it's like a thousand XP per per uh, rank advancement so it's like so I have to play 20 matches in a day to rank up a level assuming I don't do any challenges so they're like alright well we'll do a we'll do a sort of uh uh, diminishing returns thing so it's like so you're penalizing me for playing more because what happens is like your first two or three matches you get 200 xp and then the next match or two after that you get 100 xp and then the next match after that you get 50 xp and then it, it bottoms out at 50, 50 xp and i think it's a 24 hour reset before you go back to 200 xp so again they're like penalizing people who want to keep playing which doesn't make any sense and another thing is you know when you get like uh I forget what it's called when you get like 10 kills without dying or something like that like unstoppable or ultra kill or something like that um, but you're getting a bunch of badges like that you're getting you know I've, I've left matches with like a six oh or yeah like a six KDR and you know like 30 kills and like a bunch of triple kills and like an ultra kill and and grenade kills and backstabs and all these you know badges and all this you know stuff and it's like i can have an amazing match where i just fucking stomped the other team and i was the bane of everybody's existence and and i'm feeling like you know i'm top of the fucking world and then i go to the xp screen and it's like 50 xp like there's no xp for good play <laughs> there's no reward for good play and so you know, if, if it was merit-based progression, I'd probably, I think I'm level 20 now, 25. I'd probably be level 50 or 60 by now if it was merit-based play because I've, I've been killing it on there recently. Um, and that really discourages people. And another thing, again, a lot of people have bitched about is there's just nothing good to unlock in the store. I mean, the only thing I really wanted was the, the sort of SPI, it's called EVA, but it looks like the SPI armor helmet. It's kind of like a space helmet. And, and the actual Master Chief helmet. And those are the only two things I wanted. Everything else in the store sucks. Uh, the armor colors suck. And it's just not worth grinding it out. You know, and the challenges are super tedious and obnoxious. But now we're coming to one of the bigger issues with multiplayer. And that is desync. And if you guys are not familiar with desync, um, desync refers to uh, your desynchronization with the server. So what you're seeing on your screen is not what the server is actually processing at that point. Meaning, if someone's in your crosshairs on, on your screen, on your computer, and you click to fire on them, you could be getting headshot after headshot after headshot with a sniper rifle or something, and just nothing's happening to them. Because in reality, on the server, they may be like, I don't know, six feet to the left, or in the most egregious examples, they may be in another room already. <laughs> so... Um, this is a huge issue with Halo. And, you know, here's the other thing, too. It's easy to let Halo gaslight you, especially if you're like me, who's never... I've never been the kind of guy who, like, dominates at multiplayer games. I mean, I think the best I ever got... I was pretty good at Counter-Strike for a little while, but I was, like, playing it obsessively. Um, and by pretty good, I mean I just, like, I wasn't dying constantly. I could get maybe two or three kills on the enemy team, but I would pretty much die every round, you know, so... I've never really played too many multiplayer games where I just start wiping the floor with people. And I was wiping the floor with people and in Halo Infinite. And yet there would be times where I would go into, to, you know, I would clearly on my screen, I'm the first one who initiated a melee and they hadn't even moved yet. And all of a sudden I get smacked in the face and I die. Or I'm chasing a guy around a corner and I come around the corner and his shields are already dropped and I just unload half a magazine into him with the assault rifle and he's still standing there and then he pops me once in the face and I'm dead and I didn't even know my shields were down you know or 
This is another thing that really pisses me off. Um, so, I mean, obviously sound design is important in these games. So, you know, when you hear the, the clink of grenades dropping at your feet, that's a good sign that you should get the fuck out of there. But half the time I'll hear clink, 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 and I'll get the hell out of there and I'll hear all the explosions go off. And then all of a sudden one more explosion will go off. And I'm like, wait, what? I heard them drop over there. What's that? And it'll be a grenade right at my feet. And it's like, I didn't hear it drop. And that's part of desync as well, because um, the grenade was there. It just didn't ever register on my computer. And so the, the, the computer is not actually sending data to me to, to play the sound. So you will die a lot to grenades that you, you don't know they're there, you know. And um, people have pointed this out too. This is really bad because this doesn't even have anything to do with, to, anything to do with desync. But um, if someone is behind you, and they're within your hitbox, and you press the melee button, you'll do damage to them. So basically, your melee damage basically applies in a sort of, uh, almost like like the electron cloud on, a, on an atom. <laughs> it's it's uh, um, It sort of applies to anything in the, in the sort of cloud of your hitbox, which is just fucking stupid. Because that's another thing. I always try and aim my melee hits. That's why sometimes I go second, because I'm just like, alright, they're going to aim at my chest or I'm aiming right at their face because at least in previous Halo games it kind of mattered or at least making sure that they're centered in your crosshairs before you hit them you know um, but it doesn't matter anymore so people are just winning slap fights all the time that they have no business winning um, lunge for the uh, sword doesn't work half the time like someone will be like two feet like the lunge for the sword I'd say is probably like four to five feet in front of you right Someone will be like two feet in front of you, like basically like you can breathe on them. You know, you could fog up their, their visor, you know, almost at that distance. And you'll press the sword and he'll just kind of swipe upwards without lunging. And then they'll come in and smack you in the face or something. And uh, again, this is not due to like, oh, well, the sword lunge doesn't work. It's due to desync. It's due to the fact that, uh, you know, on my computer, he's right there. But on his computer, he's not. He's not in my lunge distance yet, or he's not in my crosshairs, you know. Um, and so the desync issue, I thought it was me because I don't have the best internet in the world. It's not crappy, but it's not, you know, it's not like, you know, fucking 100 gigabits, you know, uh, down or 200 gigabits down or anything like that. It's, I think it's like 40 down and 10 up. Um, but it should be good enough. I mean, I, I've never had any major issues with other multiplayer games. I've never had desync in like Hunt Showdown, for example, as far as I know. Um and it's just infuriating because with desync issue, because they're really bad. I mean, getting shot through walls and people are like, how do I get shot through walls? It's like, you're not getting shot through the wall. Your character on the server is out in the open, but on your computer, you're, you're behind the wall. So basically it means that even if you're good at the game, you're going to be dying unfair deaths all the time. And also it's not even really a good test of how good you are because you don't know how bad the desync issues other players are experiencing. Another thing that you'll come across is character shields will be down and you'll hit them with a three round burst in the head with the BR and they keep running for like a second, sometimes two, and then all of a sudden they just drop to the ground, dead. Because it still hasn't registered with the server that they're dead. And then all of a sudden it happens. So it is it is so bad, like, here's the thing. Like I said, I prefaced the multiplayer section of this review with the multiplayer is really fun. It is really fun when it's working. But they're, the fact that there are basically only a couple of usable weapons really sucks and it makes it less fun. And now the fact that technically it's just unplayable. Because once you start getting good, you start recognizing all the kills that you missed and all the unfair deaths. And every multiplayer game is going to have those. You know, desync issues is not... It's ubiquitous across basically every game. That's just how... As far as I understand, that's how netcode works. But it, the thing is, is that this is clearly a huge problem with Infinite in and of itself. Because usually you can account desync with issues with your internet connection or the servers being a little buggy for, for a second or two. And it's like, okay, those are acceptable. You know, you know, things happen. You know, things happen in life. Life is, life is crazy. Life is random. But with Halo Infinite, it is such a consistent problem amongst so many people that there is a serious problem with the game. So once again, you know, 343, they knew about the desync issues. They knew about Big Team Battle. Um, they knew about the fact that they launched a, a AAA game 
with like five maps essentially which it's like how is that not going to get boring inside of two weeks for everybody you know um the single player care single player campaign was obviously kind of slapped together in about i'd say 18 months you know it clearly it, it totally reeks of that um and people have pointed out, too, there's not Forge. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I, I, I There's some guys who are big Halo buffs. I was watching their video, and, and they were talking about all these points, and I was just like, yes, 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 yes. So I'm actually just going to clip that in, and those are all the things that are wrong with the game. Those are all the things that everyone has told 343 are issues. And it also, 343 just said, fuck it, we're taking a holiday break, and we're coming back. This is I, the worst melee in any Halo game I've ever played, to the point that it makes you want to rage quit. Which leads me to Player Collision, which I know I, I know why this is the first Halo game that doesn't have Player Collision. Because it's to hide the fact that the net code in the desync is so f bad. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> they had to take it off, because it was probably crashing the game or causing all kinds of problems. Uh, Oddball, completely broken now, because every day someone finds a new exploit in that game mode. Of course, all the content we're missing, everyone knows well the missing stuff, the game is completely incomplete. There's no stat tracking in any way. Just to add on top of your list here, playlists, progression, skill-based matchmaking, cross-core customization, team damage, player collision, disbanding lobbies, more maps, events suck, vehicle spawning, weapon tuning, vehicle balancing, more earnable stuff, custom games is broken, options for custom games suck, theater's broken, co-op campaign, forge, firefighter in extra mode, where's that at, grenade jumping, gravity hammer physics, challenge swaps suck, challenge system sucks, there's no currency given in the battle pass, hackers, Jeff Steitzer not in big team battle, and a variety of other bugs and crashes. Yeah, so if they if they do fix the event, but the, the these other problems remain, like what's the point? Like it's unplayable right now. I, and I, also, the other that pisses me off too is big team battle should have been the kind of patch that it's like all right yeah first week we're back it's gonna be like within three days four days of us being back they're like we might see it at the end of january and it's like for me you know my, my life's moving very fast right now i'm about to move in a totally different situation new job everything like that and it's just like fuck i don't think i'm gonna have time to play fucking play halo at the end of january i was hoping to get in a few more cool matches before you know uh the sort of paradigm shift in my life soon and i just you know it's like what the fuck you know like you guys again a 60 dollar triple a big budget fucking halo which is like one of the you know juggernaut names of the gaming industry or used to be with microsoft money behind it and they can't have more than five maps forge modes not in there uh broken net code with desync issues uh big team battle doesn't work uh, terrible optimization on the single player campaign single player campaign is so i mean the open world aspects of it while fun they're just fun because these are things that have already been fun in other games they're not fun in and of themselves or i mean i mean they are fun in and of themselves but actually put in this game compared to every other open world game that has come out you know ubisoft games just cause um uh, even the fucking tomb raider games you know uh, compared to all those other games it's kind of like anemic you're like that's it you know, it, it's a big, empty, barren nothing. That's what Halo Infinite is, the open world. And like I said, the only activity I actually really enjoyed was unlocking fobs and saving marines. And as I said, as I pointed out before, I think a sort of pseudo RTS type thing where you have to like manage all the resources and stuff. But again, you're not like, you're not this omnipotent guy in the clouds. It's like you're on the ground and you have to go do some of those objectives. But, you know, you're also kind of like in charge of all this shit. So you got to tell them what resources to save. You know, you got to you got to coordinate your efforts uh, between different fobs. You have to defend them from attack. You have to upgrade them. You have to get vehicles repaired and stuff like that. I think that would have been much better. Um, also, I think another thing is fast travel shouldn't just be like you show up. Fast travel should have been like, you know, kind of like Metal Gear Solid 5. You know, the fucking Pelican comes down. It would have been awesome too if the Pelican could come down. You load it up with like 10 Marines. And then you just drop into a base. I mean, I, I don't know. It, call me crazy, but I think that's what drop ships are built for. That's what, like, you know, that's what they're built for, to drop uh, ground troops into hot enemy territory and then and or evac them quickly, you know, and provide some air support and cover fire. Um, so it would have been so cool to do that. But no, the, the, the Pelican is just a store device. It's a cutscene device. Like, you almost never see it. The, it drops off vehicles, quote unquote. But it's like, why can't it take me around? the ring why can't it load me and a bunch of you know leathernet marines 
um, up and go, you know, fuck shit up. Like, I, I don't understand why we couldn't have done any of that. So, yeah, that <sighs> Halo Infinite multiplayer is a fucking nightmare. Um, the prices in the store are absolutely insane. Um, thank God the Battle Pass was reasonable. Battle Pass was like seven bucks. And since I'm playing on Game Pass anyways, it's like, yeah, seven bucks. All right. I, I got seven bucks worth of entertainment out of it for sure. Um, but anyways, that's, that's, yeah, that's it. Those are, that's my thoughts on Halo Infinite. And I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Um, I recognize that there's probably a decent portion of the, the people who subscribe to my channel that are probably not that into Halo. Because, I mean, this is more about immersive sims and, and kind of a different class of games. But, you know, Halo is something that's been near and dear to my heart for a long time. And again, I'm not saying Halo Infinite is bad. I'm just saying, like, you know, people don't forget what it, they promised. You know what I mean? It's it's kind of like it's kind of like someone promising you like a prime rib dinner with like all the fixins and, you know, like just juicy, perfect, medium rare, you know, prime rib, perfectly cooked cooked with uh i forget what the, the those like little custard things are called or whatever that they serve with it and like like just delicious sides and everything like that you know and, and like you know top shelf wine and everything and then when they kind of finally come to deliver it they're like okay here's a you know kind of grocery store quality beef cooked medium you know with some mashed potatoes and it's like yeah this is still good but it's not you know it's not like it's not like usda uh, grade A or double A or whatever the highest is. It's not like that. And it's also not the prime rib that you promised. And it's also missing like all the other shit, all the sides and the wine and everything. It's steak and potatoes. And who doesn't like steak and potatoes? But when you promise us, you know, a five star prime rib dinner and you just give us grocery store bought steak and potatoes, somebody should say something. That's not what we signed up for, you know? So. And I don't, the, the reason I'm doing this review and, and discussion is not, an, not enough people are talking about this. The fact that Halo Infinite is missing the infinite part, but also it's a completely unfinished game. Um, so like I said, I'm going to splice in those guys' comments um, about, because, you know, they're, they're way more plugged into Halo multiplayer than I am. And, and you know and things that they want to see because you know I I'm, I'm you know I don't have very eclectic taste for Halo I mean I think the most crazy thing I've ever played is SWAT you know um, SWAT game mode typically I just keep it to quick play or big team battle those are my two things um, I hate other game modes like oddball and CTF and stuff I just I, nobody plays the objective so they're not fun um, but those guys, you know, they, you know, they have a much more specific list of grievances, but I agree, you know, if they, if 343 has not implemented those things and has no roadmap to do so, and it's like, what the, and just the fact that they launched a Halo game without Forge and without co-op, and it's like, it's not even like, well, you know, give us like a month or two, sorry, we're just a little behind, they're like, no, maybe like in six months, sometime next year, it's like, dude, what? <laughs> like, why, how could you release this game knowing that you still had fucking six months, you know? To, to even finish the most basic features. Um, and like I said, you know, it, it, between the shitty launch of the Master Chief Collection, um, I don't believe Halo 4 or 5 had that many technical issues, but they, uh, I mean, in terms of story and gameplay, they had massive issues. I feel like 343 doesn't understand Halo, and I also feel like there's probably a lot of people on that team that, I don't know how they got hired, there is a, there is a, you know, I, yeah, I just feel like maybe they're just not good at their jobs. They don't actually know what they're doing. I have no idea. Because I can't, I can't, you know, yes, other AAA studios release shitty products, but then there's other teams that release products that work much better. I know Hunt Showdown has its issues, and I know that they're having issues with cheaters right now, but the basic multiplayer component of the game just works out of the box, and it kind of always has. So, I mean, it's like, and it's a much, much smaller team with much less money behind it. So I don't understand how 343 with all the money and all the resources can't code something that, you know, Bungie never had issues with that. You know, they would launch a game and it would pretty much work. Yeah, there'd be server issues occasionally, but never anything like Master Chief Collection. And it's also something that they never would have taken years to fix. Like with Master Chief Collection, like why did it take so long to fix the matchmaking? I mean, I stopped playing the damn game. I stopped playing Master Chief Collection. I uninstalled it and I never touched it again because I was like, I've played these campaigns ad nauseum. 
and multiplayer doesn't work. So what, am, what the fuck am I gonna do with it? And I, I bought it at like, I bought it when I got my Xbox One and I haven't touched it again until this year. I got my Xbox One in 2014. So th by this year, I mean 2021. So seven years, I didn't touch it because it was just in such a shitty state. Um, I, I'm not saying it took them seven years to fix it. I'm just saying, yeah. So anyways, I'm sorry the review went a little long. Uh, these are how my thoughts videos go. Uh, if you want, you could, <laughs> maybe I should put these out as like, you know, like pseudo podcasts or whatever. Um, but yeah, these are my thoughts on Halo Infinite. And I'd love to know what you guys uh, think about it. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Um, and yeah, exactly like the analogy I gave, it's, it's, it's unfortunate that it's so broken and it's unfortunate that it underdelivered on its promises because I think there is the makings of a good game in Halo Infinite. And I did enjoy a lot of the campaign. And like I said, I had a lot of fun in multiplayer and had a lot of fun stomping people and finally playing a multiplayer game where I'm kind of top dog. But, uh, but yeah, but again, you know, I found it tough to put down because I was actually winning all the time, but even with the catharsis of constantly winning and being a badass and just, you know, putting fear into the hearts of the other team, which is something I don't have a ton of experience with. I, I'm usually always like middle of the road. Like, am I good enough to hold my own, but I also get killed a lot and I got to watch my ass. Um, even with that, I had to stop because the desync issues are just getting insane. You know, I felt like every time I was spawning, I was dying over shit, I, I had no idea, like I didn't even hear the shot, didn't hear the grenade go off, don't know what the hell's going on, um, the desync issues are just insane, and again, it's boring too, five fucking maps, and we don't even know when new ones are coming, so, anyways, thanks for watching guys, um, I actually was, and may still do a, a ranking of all the Halo games, um, if you guys want to see that, just let me know in the comments, um, I will definitely do a ranking, of all the Halo games from worst to best, because uh, I've been a huge Halo fan forever. Um, I love the lore. Uh, you know, what's weird is I think the lore is way more interesting than the games. The games never really sell you on the experience that the lore and marketing uh, hypes you up for. And you're going to see, if, you actually, if I actually do that video, you're going to see that's kind of a theme. That, like, I, I'm always let down by the promise of the game and the marketing. And the experience that they actually deliver on is, is quite underwhelming. But still... It's a series that has a special place in my heart, and I have had a lot of fun playing it over the years. So, anyways, uh, that's it for me. Thanks for watching.